Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amna Hussain, board certified pediatrician, board certified lactation consultant, and mom. I'm mom to two girls, and today we're going to be talking about a potty training topic and kind of more going in depth and personal, where I'm sharing things I did differently between potty training my oldest versus my second, and things that I absolutely kept the same and recommend you might consider as well when you start in your potty training journey. So first off, I thought it'd be helpful if we start off with things I did differently. Now, if you've seen my last video on potty training where I say things to consider before you begin your potty training journey, I hit a little bit on it, but I personally do not recommend one potty training method over another. This is because the potty training world is incredibly controversial. I don't want to be put into one bad camp for saying I don't like the three day method, which personally I don't, but I also don't want people to feel that I think they did something wrong if they did choose that method and it worked for them because that works for you just because I don't recommend it and I didn't use it does not mean to say that it did not work for somebody. So I think that's really important to say first off. Second off is there is a huge trend about infant potty training and really doing away with diapers and being able to put them on the potty immediately when they show signs of needing to use the restroom or needing to urinate, needing to defecate. This is a great concept, definitely something we see in other parts of the world. I do acknowledge that we don't see it very commonly here in the US, and I will also state that I'm not so sure how practical it would be to be able to do it for subsequent children, especially if you have an oldest, right? Because that's very hard to multitask and your little one immediately has to go pee or poop. All right, so let's get started on that note about things I did differently. I actually did not use a book this time. Now last time, yes, I was a pediatrician, but believe it or not, I did not know how to potty train a child. I knew the developmental readiness signs, which we talked about in our last video that I'll link right here, but I did not really know the best method to go about. Now, I don't wanna throw any shade at any authors in any particular way, but I will say that the book that I bought for my oldest, Asia, I did not even crack open or take a look at for my second child, simply because this was one of the most highly rated, very popular books, and I just did not love the way it was represented as the child getting no say or no autonomy in the whole matter. And again, you guys maybe already figured out that I don't love those three-day methods. So this was not a three-day method book. But this was a book that I didn't feel like I got too much out of. Did I use some of the tactics and learn a little bit from the first time I glanced at it with my eldest? Yes, but did I use really anything from it the second time around? Absolutely not. So I will say that if you are a parent and the first potty training experience with your eldest went really well, then maybe you could do that same method for your subsequent children. And if it did not go well, then perhaps venture out and look at other methods. So that's all I'll say on that, because again, I don't want to throw any shade on any particular authors. I'll just say that the method that we ended up using for my eldest worked really well, and I'll talk about that more later, but I did not really go to any reference books per se. The second thing that I did a little differently. Now with my eldest, when we were potty training, we were potty training. This was like one priority, one child, this was all we had to figure out. Obviously, when you have subsequent children, you cannot just not leave the house or basically plan all your to-dos and errands around this one child's potty training. So we did trial runs. And I call them trial runs, but really they were short errands, right? We have to go to Target for something. We have target right well we tried to keep things really close by did I check for potty beforehand yes did I make sure to check for potty right after we got back yes did I come prepared with chucks right little puppy pads did I come prepared with extra items of clothing absolutely but that I think that's really important to consider that I did not even try to venture out of the house until I was fully confident in my child's staying dry capabilities. And I don't think I did that for my second. We just had to get things done. We had to go to dance or we had to get some errands done. So she was gonna come with us. 
The third thing I will acknowledge was staying on track with timed pee breaks was very hard for me with my second. My nanny did a great job of this with my second child because she really only had her to take care of at home, which was super helpful. Um, but on the weekends, it kind of felt like all hell broke loose, especially if my husband wasn't nearby, my partner, right? So it was me trying to stay on top of making sure she got to the potty in time, and that did not always happen. We are now almost four months, five months out from potty training and still sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, do you have to go potty? Or she'll have to remind me and I already know I'm a little late. So that's something I could probably have improved, but I 100% recognize that it went differently for my subsequent children or child than it did for my eldest, who was my one and only priority at the time. Now things that we kept the exact same was our reaction. That was really huge. So if she went, it was a huge deal. We still gave her a reward system. I thought that that was really important for her. The hardest part about it was <laughs> just because your younger sister went potty and got an M&M does not mean you get an M&M either. So trying to figure that out with two children, that was a tough one. So good luck there. I <laughs> No advice besides trying to negotiate with a five-year-old on not being able to give her a treat for something that was her sister's victory. That was a little tough. But we still did honor a reward system for my second, and I don't regret it. I think it was super helpful for her. And the other thing that we really tried to keep in mind and continue was big girl underwear, allowing her a choice, right? You get the choice of picking out which underwear you want. And that is really important. Choices are sort of like your chance to give them their veiled independence. Now, does that mean that I let her choose everything, like what she's going to wear every day, what she's going to eat every day, all of those things, if she's going to go potty? No, but giving her a choice on which underwear she's going to pick or which underwear you're gonna buy for her to now have, that is something that I really think can make a big difference, again, in giving them a sense of independence, but also excitement about this new endeavor. Lastly, respect. And now this one is super important. You have to respect your child's needs. You have to. This is a non-negotiable in my book, especially when it comes to something like this. Um, it's a body function. They are lowering and picking up their pants, you have to give them some dignity in this matter too. So if they are saying, no, I don't have to go, no, I don't have to go, no, I don't have to go, do you feel like you're hounding them? And how can we get around this? Because again, you wanna respect their wishes and you don't wanna make it something adverse for them where they don't wanna to go to the potty. Before I go further, let me just point out that it takes the average toddler about 30 seconds to process and respond. Your immediate, drop of the hat response of no maybe there's a lot going on maybe they don't want to leave what they're doing right now maybe they're very involved and in playing blocks or watching a movie and they feel that if we stop that we are stopping them in their tracks they won't be able to go further they can't keep playing maybe they actually don't have to go or maybe there's something else at play and i think that's really important to get down to the level of so Maybe you can say, all right, we'll play blocks for a little bit longer, but then in one or two minutes, when mommy reminds you again, it's gonna be time to go. Or you could pick a favorite book and take that with them. So again, if they're in the middle of reading books, like my children might often be, great, the next book we're gonna read is gonna be on the potty. I think that's really helpful, again, when it comes to respecting your child. You have to recognize they may not wanna miss an activity. And so maybe if the activity is appropriate, right? Not painting, not finger painting, but a book or stickers, you could maybe bring that with you into the potty. And that's something that, again, allows you to respect their wishes and not feel like you're constantly hounding them or like you're the bad guy in the process. So those are some things that work for us that we kept the same. You also got to hear some things that we did differently. I'd love to hear if you have more than one child or if you've had one child that you tried one method with, it did not go well, and you did things differently and they went really well, please let me know in the comments. I'd actually really like to know. This is important for me, but also as you know, a pediatrician and a, and a mom, I'd love to hear what things went really well and what didn't. 
If this video was helpful, give it two thumbs up. Make sure you tune in for the next video and I hope you guys have a great week. Bye.